Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining me as we continue reading Carl Rogers on Becoming a Person, a Therapist's View of Psychotherapy. I'm reading from the 60th anniversary edition, and the last time uh, we were here, we had finished the um, the sixth stage on the top of 151 uh, in this edition, and uh, and we are going to continue on with the seventh stage uh, and perhaps read through um, 155, uh, the top of 155, and, and where it says some questions regarding the process continuum. So let's see how far we get if we get to that, and uh, and uh, and let's get started. So here we go. The seventh stage, in those areas in which the sixth stage has been reached, it is no longer so necessary that the client be fully received by the therapist, though this still seems helpful. However, because of the tendency for the sixth stage to be irreversible, the client often seems to go on into the seventh and final stage without much need of the therapist's help. This stage occurs as much outside of the therapeutic relationship as in it, and is often reported rather than experienced in the therapeutic hour. I shall try to describe some of its characteristics as I have observed them. New feelings are experienced with immediacy and richness of detail, both in the therapeutic relationship and outside. The experiencing of such feelings is used as clear referent. The client quite consciously endeavors to use these reference in order to know in a clear and more differentiated way who he is, what he wants, and what his attributes are, attitudes, excuse me, attitudes are. This is true even when the feelings are unpleasant or frightening. There is a growing and continuing sense of acceptance, ownership of these changing feelings, and basic trust in his own process. This trust is not primarily in the conscious process which goes on, but rather in the total organ organis organismic it's another one of those words for me. Anyway, process. One client describes the way in which the experience characteristic of the sixth, sixth stage looks to him, describing it in terms, in terms characteristic of the seventh stage. Quote, in therapy here, what has counted is sitting down and saying, this is what is bothering me and play around with it for a while until something gets squeezed out through some emotional crescendo. And the thing is over with, looks different. Even then, I can't tell just exactly what happened. It's just that I exposed something, shook it up and turned it around. And when I put it back, it felt better. It's a little frustrating because I'd like to know exactly what's going on. This is a funny thing because it feels as if I'm not doing anything at all about it. The only active part I take is to be alert and grab a thought as it's going by. And there's a sort of feeling, well, now, what will I do with it now that I've seen it right? There's no handles on it, on it you can adjust or anything. Just talk about it a while and let it go. And apparently that's all there is to it. Leaves me with somewhat unsatisfied feeling though, a feeling that I haven't accomplished anything. It's been accomplished without my knowledge or consent. The point is not is I'm not sure of the quality of the readjustment because I didn't get to see it to check on it. All I can do is observe the facts, that I look at things a little differently and, and am less anxious by a long shot and a lot more active. Things are looking up in general. I'm very happy with the way things have gone, but I feel sort of like a spectator, end quote. A few moments later, following this rather grudging acceptance of the process going on in him, he adds, quote, I seem to work best when my conscious mind is only concerned with facts and letting the analysis of them go on by itself without paying any attention to it, end quote. Experiencing has lost almost completely its structured bound aspects and becomes process experience. That is, the situation is experienced and interpreted in its newness, not as the past. The example given in the sixth stage suggests the quality I'm trying to describe. Another example in a very specific area is given by a client in a follow-up interview as he explains the different quality that has come about in his creative work. It used to be what he tried, it used to be that he tried to be orderly. 
quote, you begin at the beginning and you progress through to the end, end quote. Now he is aware that the process in himself is different. When I'm working on a, an idea, the whole idea develops like a latent image coming out when you develop a photograph. It doesn't start at one edge and fill in over the other. It comes all over. At first, all you see is the hazy outline and you wonder what, what it's going to be. And then gradually something fits here and something fits there. And pretty soon it all comes clear at once, end quote. It is obvious that he, is, he has not only come to trust this process, but that he is experiencing it as it is, not in terms of some past. The self becomes increasingly simple, the subjective and the reflective awareness of experiencing. The self is much less frequently a perceived object and much more frequently something confidently felt in process. An example can be taken from the same follow-up interview with the client quoted above. In this interview, because he is reporting his experience in therapy, he again becomes aware of himself as an object, but it is clear that this has not been the quality of his day-by-day -day experience. After reporting many changes, he says, quote, I hadn't really thought of any of these things in connection with therapy until tonight, jokingly. Gee, maybe something did happen because my life since has been different. My productivity has gone up. My confidence has gone up. I've become brash in situations I would have avoided before. And also I've become much less brash in situations where I would have become obnoxious before. It is clear that only afterward does he realize, oh, that was an end quote. It is clear that only afterward does he realize what his self has been. Personal constructs are tentatively reformulated to be validated against further experience, but even then to be held loosely. A client describes the way in which such a construct changed between interviews toward the end of therapy. Quote, I don't know what, in parentheses, changed, but I definitely feel different about looking back at my childhood and some of the hostility about my mother and father has evaporated. I substituted for a feeling of resentment about them, a sort of acceptance of the fact that they did a number of things that were undesirable with me. But I substituted a sort of feeling of interested excitement that, gee, now that I'm finding out what was wrong, I can do something about it, correct their mistakes, end quote. Here, the way in which he construes his experience with his parents has been sharply altered. Another example may be taken from an interview with a client who has always felt that he had to please people. Quote, I can see what it would be like, that it doesn't matter if I don't please you, that pleasing you or not pleasing you is not the thing that is important to me. If I could just kind of say that to people, you know, the idea of just spontaneously saying something and it not mattering whether it pleases or not, oh God, you could say almost anything, but that's true, you know, end quote. And a little later, he asks himself with incredul incredulity, quote, you mean, if I'd really be what I feel like being, that would be all right? He is struggling toward reconstruing, uh, he, a reconstruing of some very basic aspects of his experience. Internal communication is clear with feelings and symbols well-matched and fresh terms for new feelings. There is an experience of effective choice of new ways of being. Because all the elements of experience are available to awareness, choice becomes real and effective. Here, a client is just coming to this realization. I'm trying, quote, I'm trying to encompass a way of talking that is a way of, a way out of being scared of talking. Perhaps just kind of thinking out loud is a way to do that. But I've got so many thoughts, I could only do it a little bit. But maybe I could let my talk be an expression of my real thoughts instead of just trying to make the proper noises in each situation. Here, he is sensing the, end quote. Here, he is sensing the possibility of effective choice. Another client comes in telling of an argument he had with his wife, quote, 
I wasn't so angry with myself. I didn't hate myself so much. I realized I'm acting childishly and somehow I chose to do that, end quote. It is not easy to find examples to which to illustrate this seventh stage because relatively few clients achieve, fully achieve this point. Let me try to summarize briefly with the qualities of this endpoint of, of the continuum. When the individual has, in this process of change, reached the seventh stage, we find ourselves involved in a new dimension. The client has now incorporated the quality of motion, of flow, of changingness into every aspect of his psychological life, and this becomes an out, its outstanding characteristic. He lives in his feelings knowingly and with basic trust in him, in them and acceptance of them. The ways in which he construes experience are continually changing as his personal constructs are modified by each new living event. His experiencing is process in nature, feeling the new in each situation and interpreting it anew, interpreting it in terms of the past only to the extent that it is now identical with the past. He experiences with a quality of immediacy knowing at the same time that he experiences. He values exactness and differentiation of his feelings and his personal meanings of his experience. His internal communication between various aspects of himself is free and unblocked. He communicates himself freely in relationships with others, and these relationships are not stereotyped, but person to person. He is aware of himself, but not as an object. Rather, it is a reflective, ref reflexive awareness, a subjective living in himself in motion. He perceives himself as responsibly related to his problems. Indeed, he feels a fully responsible relationship to his life in all its fluid aspects. He lives fully in himself as a constantly changing flow of process. And end of reading for today. Um, uh, so thank you again all so much. Next time we will start uh, in the new section on page 155, some questions regarding this process continuum. And thank you all again so much for joining me um, as I continue to practice some of those words. <laughs> so have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day.